I want you to say, how might we? One, two, three? Okay, now, in Polish, I want you to write, Yak Mogli Bishmi. Say it. Yak Mogli Bishmi. All right. This is all about how might we. So um, I have, um, everybody's got that. That's going to be key uh, today. Um, now I need to know how many people in this room have been to a meeting in the last six months that was a total waste of time. Would you wave a hand? Okay, you ask that question anywhere in the world, it's always, it's a waste of time. And why? Many reasons why. But one big reason why is nothing happened. There were no results. And we went to the meeting and we went to another meeting and we went to another meeting. There is no purpose for a meeting than to solve a problem. There is no other purpose. And you get people in the room to solve a problem, and it doesn't happen. It's a great waste of uh, people. So uh, I'm going to make a little uh, framework for understanding. And if we're going to get results from a meeting, uh, one thing we're going to need is to have the right content. Now, by the right content, I mean the right people with the right knowledge. If you don't have the right people with the right knowledge, you have no chance. And people don't understand this. A lot of designers don't understand this. Um, so I was called uh, by a company, a big company. They were making car parts, fuchsia, uh, dashboard, and stuff like that. And they said, uh, trouble was their commodities. They said, uh, we work hard. We make high quality, lots, low cost. But then when we go to the customer, Ford, they say, uh, give it to me cheaper, give it to me cheaper. And we're going to be the, we're going to be in a box. We need innovation. And they said we have a team of innovation people over there, eleven people. Everyone was an automotive engineer. Every single one was an automotive engineer. There's nobody there from sales, marketing. There's no customers, Ford. There's no users. You don't have the right content. So you've got to make sure you've got the right content and you have to look at that. Who do we need? Who do we need to make this happen? However, if we want innovative results, that's not enough. We need a process. And the process is the what. What is the how? What and the how? And um, would you ever, uh, you're building a new car and you put all the parts of the car on the floor and you say, okay, workers, make the car. It's going to be a very bad car if we don't have an assembly line. That is a process. Now, that's simple, but if you're trying to solve a complex problem, it's much harder, and, and, and people don't think about it. We need a process for thinking together, thinking together. Now, if we have 10 people in the room, one person says, we don't need this meeting. I can fix it now. Let, let me... Let me leave right now, I'll fix it. One person's not sure why she's there. Boss said, go there, be quiet, take notes, don't say anything bad. One person's got more, pro more problems. He wants more things to talk about, more things to talk about. Two people want to get the facts. I don't care if it takes us six months, we're going to get the facts right now, get to the root cause. Two people learned that Einstein once said, if I had uh, one hour to save the world, I would spend 55 minutes to define the problem. So we're not doing anything until we define the problem. Two people have solutions. They have ideas like you wouldn't believe, and they yell them out, do this, do this, do this. And two people are saying, well, let me tell you why that won't work, and they evaluate everything they're hearing. And one guy says, I'd like to be devil's advocate. Have we got a problem in our hands? We don't have any process. We have people all over the place, and they don't know how to work together. Today, we need innovation, and we need teams. Things are going very, very fast, and things are complicated, and we need teams to work together. It's difficult because there is no process, no process at all. So now, um, we need some skills to make the process work. 
We need some skills. We, know how, we need to do divergent thinking, convergent thinking, deferral of judgment. We need those skills. And then we need some tools uh, to make the process work. Now, how many of you ever been in a brainstorming session? Wave a hand. How many of you have ever been in a bad brainstorming session? It's a tool that is useless unless you know how to use it. So this is not about tools. Tools are fine, but it's about skills and process. And then we need to appreciate each other's styles. We all have different styles in the process. Okay, now let's be honest. How many people in the room, you were asked to fill out a profile before you came. How many people filled it out? Very good. Uh, where is David? David Musial. You're the only guy I found this morning. You must have filled it in just recently, and Michael you didn't fill out the profile. That's okay, but it's important for you to experience what we're about to do right now. And uh, experience is the teacher, and this is all going to be experiential today. So if you filled out the process, the profile, here's what it is. We call this simplexity thinking. I made that up to indicate innovation is thinking simple. Simple, simple. Little children are the most innovative people we have because they think simple. When we get bigger, we start using big words like design thinking and innovation. And blah, blah, blah. But we're not simple is the idea. And you can't solve problems without the other person knowing what you're talking about. So we put an X on it to make simplex. And then we said, you know what we do? We try to make complex things simple. That's where simplexity comes from. Now, um, oops, it's not working. Okay, there we go. Innovative performance requires a balance, a balance. One thing is we need the knowledge. If we're going to create something new to create a cure for cancer, we need people who have lots of knowledge about the body and chemistry. But we have to multiply that knowledge by our imagination. Imagination is what turns the knowledge into new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of looking. It's like a kaleidoscope. If you look down the kaleidoscope, you hear bits and pieces of colored glass. In our brains, we have bits and pieces of knowledge, and our imagination turns the drum to create new ideas, new thoughts. But then we need evaluation. If we have 55 ideas, we need to know which are the better ideas and which are not. And evaluation is vital in the innovative process. And finally, we need action. If we aren't taking action, there was no innovation, there was no creativity. It's all part of the balance. And what we teach is it's a balanced approach. Now, when you filled out the, um, oop, wrong one. When you filled out, uh, but the thing is we all have different styles. This is a secret. We all have different styles of using that formula. Some people like one versus another, another, but we have different styles. We need to synergize. Now, if you filled out the profile, this is what you would have found. First of all, it's measuring two very different ways of gaining knowledge. How do we gain knowledge? One way of gaining knowledge is by direct experiencing. Some people do not understand until they get their hands dirty. They try it. I got it. There are some people who are the reverse. They wouldn't do anything until they sat back, analyzed it, and figured it out already. How many people in the room prefer to gain their knowledge by experiencing? Would you wave a hand? How many of you prefer to analyze and understand before you go ahead, wave a hand? We're all different, we're all different. This makes us different, and it makes it more difficult to work with if we don't understand the other person. Now, the difference is, next, that's how we gain knowledge. Now, how do you use knowledge? Two different ways of using knowledge are some people like to ideate. They like to generate new facts, new ideas, new thoughts. Some people prefer to evaluate. They're very, they like evaluating whatever they're seeing. Now, I want you to raise your hand if you're one of those people who would prefer to evaluate rather than ideate. Would you wave a hand? Not too many, some, good. How many prefer to ideate? Wave a hand. But we're different, and if we don't understand, we have trouble communicating. So this is cognitive, not personality, cognitive. Now, if I put those together, we have four. 
we have one, two, three, four as we go around, and one of them is called generating. Generating means finding new problems and opportunities to work on, something new, something we can work on, a new possibility. Second is conceptualization, is taking that new problem and understanding it, developing a good definition, like Einstein would define the problem. Then we need to go to optimization. Optimization is taking that uh, problem and that uh, uh, definition and creating a practical solution to the problem. And the third is called implementing. It's getting the thing done, doing whatever it takes to take that new solution and making it work and fixing it, doing something with it. You've done that, you've done the innovation process. This is the process. And it goes around because as you get to the top, you go around again. You either make it better or you find new problems. Every time we solve a problem, we find new problems. This is the innovation process. Simple, simple, simple. And if uh, you're a CEO in a company, you want uh, innovation, get your organization doing this. Not difficult, but it requires leadership to do it. So now I need to know, okay, let's look at generating some more. Oh, by the way, where's, where's David? This is you. Uh, see, he's a very lonely person. He all by himself there. Now, if you had done the profile, you would find out where you were on it. Um, where's Michael? Where did you f finish off? You ended up more, where is he? I guess he's missing. Uh, who else did fill out the profile? Somebody else? Do you remember? No. Okay, here we go. This is called um, generating. Okay. These are what generators like to do best. They like new possibilities. They're looking for, they like to keep their options open. They're always seeing connections uh, that they're interested in. That's called generation. Now, this is called conceptualizing. People like to see the big picture, how things fit together. They won't move ahead until we define the problem well. They like to conceptualize the whole thing. Now, these are people who are optimizers. They love to get the best solution. They will evaluate five different solutions, come up with the best one, and they are very solution-minded, solution-minded. See, uh, conceptualizers are very problem-minded, and generators are very problem-minded. Now, implementers, they will do anything that it takes, use their creativity to get the new idea implemented. They'll work very hard. They don't know, have to know what they're doing to get started. They can get started and make it up. Now, I need to know, you ha each have one choice. How many people in the room would put yourself as a generator? Would you wave a hand? Okay. Now, how many people in the room would make yourself a conceptualizer? Now, in the room, how many people are optimizers? How many people are implementers? Very good. Now, I want you to tell your partner which one you picked. I want you to tell your partner which one you picked and see if they would agree with you. Talk it over with your partner. Okay, but, uh, let me, uh, how, many people, how many people think you might be uh, a, blend of, a blend of two? Maybe a blend of two? How many people say, I've got some of everything? So it's not which one am I, it's a blend, but we all have tendencies and we need to know the difference so we can communicate with each other. Okay, now, um, I'm going to show you, uh, this is a process, uh, don't worry about it, eight steps, but generators like to find new problems and they like to get the, they like get facts. Everything is interesting to them, everything is interesting. Um, what conceptual is like is problem definition. This is critical that we define the problem well, and they like they get ideas. They get ideas. Now, optimizers like to evaluate, select, analyze, get the best solution, and they will make a plan for implementing. Now, implementers are going to sell the if they have to sell the idea, gain acceptance, they'll do it, and they take action. So in this process, action is not something you do after the process. Action is part of the process, and, and, that, and it's, it's, it's difficult to do. Okay, so now, uh, what kind of jobs do people have? 
Uh, basically, if you are um, a generator, many generators do not find themselves in companies. They don't seem to fit very well industrial companies. Um, uh, often they don't know what to do with, uh, with generators, but they tend to be um, uh, artists. They'll be in jobs that are outside artistic. Um, they will uh, be in uh, training and development. They're all things that are not too cut and dried. Now, uh, people generally fall into research and development. How many people here are in market research? Anybody here in market research? Very heavy conceptualizers. And these are people who have to, research and development is usually that. And this is on a base of 10,000 people. Now, uh, for um, anybody who has to get a solution for a living, engineers are heavily into here. Um, uh, people who are uh, in finance, accounting, and implementers, anybody who has to make it happen every day. Um, project managers. Um, Walmart, uh, what's, what's now, the uh, logistics is huge. Logistics is huge today. And that's where the jobs tend to fall in, okay? It doesn't mean that means anything. It's just the way the data shows. Now, people find it hard to problem solve together, not because they don't like each other, because they think differently. This is cognitive. Now, in, where's the implementers? The implementers, they see gener uh, conceptualizers as kind of a waste of time. They uh, wonder why they get paid. They don't understand why they get paid. You were asking uh, for results. Well, they don't get results. They think a lot. On the other hand, conceptually uh, see implementers as dangerous people. They don't care what they're doing as long as they're doing something. They like to be busy, busy, busy. Optimizers see generators as basically airy-fairy useless people. Uh, they don't know what they really want. They start working on five new problems before they finish one. And it's hard to pin them down, what do they want? On the other hand, could generally see optimized as too narrow-minded. They think they know the right answer, but they might have the wrong problem. And they're just interested in, they, um, they just don't want to see the big picture, just focus. Now, good leaders, no matter what you've got, you could leverage that, conver uh, that diversity and turn it into an asset, not a liability, by getting all all those working together is what it boils down to. So here's what the research shows. Everybody in this room is a blend. Every single person in the room is a blend. That's vital. And it's about states, not traits. Uh, anybody know what the difference between, st I mean by states, not traits? A trait is a personality. You can't really change your personality. This is not personality. This is state of mind. It's how I think. And you are expected to be able to change your thinking as you work in the team. Uh, number three uh, is, is the one, depending on the context, your ability to shift is more important than your favorite dominant. We have definite research. By the way, all of this is totally researched. They're uh, very high level articles and um, published everywhere. And basically, a mixture team will outperform a homogeneous team, but they won't have as much fun. And, and that should make some sense. You have to work with other people. And finally, uh, generators are in short supply in industrial corporations. And a trained facilitator can make things work regardless of the composition. They know how to put a facilitator. Here's some blends. Um, this is a person who likes uh, these two. How many people in the room might have been this blend? Implementer and, and generator. Here's another blend. There's some people who like generating and conceptualizing. Now, David, uh, this is you. He likes uh, uh, conceptualizing, but also does like some optimizing. And this is very common in industry, very common. They hire people who can analyze, get the right answer, never mind the problem, and implement. Okay, this is very typical of industry. Now, some case studies. This is a... Um, Bunch of, this is a very, a very, very um, efficient, high profit company. They have 28 business units. They make everything for the airlines, wheels and brakes, landing gear. They're trying to get into new products and markets and having trouble. This is the team. 
Are we missing anything? Not one generator, not one generator. They uh, have a model, a company model. We are on it. We are on it. So they're out in the uh, airports fixing wheels and brakes. There is no incentive for anyone to come up with a new possibility. How they fixed this was they made it um, all 28 business units incentive. If you come up with a brand new idea, you will not have to fund it yourself. We will pride it from headquarters to fix this problem. Now here's an old-fashioned company and they desperately need a new idea. And they take uh, Derek, uh, Derek, you are going to come up with this team. And he does. He puts this team together. And they get a breakthrough idea. Now, did he pick the right team? See, that's, uh, that's him. In the, he's the optimizer. He put the team together. If all we want is a breakthrough idea, was this the right team? And the answer is yes. But now he's got a new problem. There is no action coming from this team. So he's got a new problem to do, which is what do I do now? I got the idea. Are you okay with this? The process is a whole. Now, this is a um, strategy organization in a big insurance company. And their job is to understand the market for health insurance. This is in the US. And they're having trouble because every time they come up with a strategy, something new happens and they have to change the strategy. So they're worried of going ahead without being totally confident their strategy is good. And here's the team. Guess who the implementer is? She's the secretary to the group. <laughs> they're never going to get finished. They're never going to get finished because they didn't want to go ahead. And that happens in many companies. Where, why won't they move? They're not satisfied to move ahead. This is a major high-tech uh, software company. This is real. Should they be fearing falling behind? Does anybody know what company this might be? Could you guess, might be? I can't tell you. Can you guess who they might be? Any guesses? It could be. <laughs> Ever heard of uh, Research in Motion, Blackberry? Could be. <laughs> Ever heard of Microsoft? Could be. What they're worried about is somebody's going to, all they do every day is implement little improvements, little improvements, little improvements. I go to my PC in the morning. They tell me we have made three improvements to your feet, which I don't need, yesterday. Thank you very much. But they're vulnerable to somebody coming up with a brand new innovation on the right-hand side because they're so focused on engineering little improvements. Okay? Uh, this is the only group I ever had with more generators than anybody else. Uh, who are they? They're, uh, they're in an association called Entrepreneurship and Venture Capital. And I did one day with them, and this is how they turned out. Now, would this be a surprise to anybody? It wasn't a surprise to me, but this is not, this is not innovation. This is simply generation. What I taught them was we have a process, and you have to go from generation all the way through implementation, and you have to partner with people who are different from you to get through the whole process. And that was the learning that, that was my job. Air traffic controllers, aren't we glad? We don't want these people conceptualizing a new way to land the plane. We want them to land the plane. This is what they're like. Market research. This is what market research looks like. This is from actual industry. They have to understand the uh, market. Now, this is a team of market researchers. They have got 57 pages of great new data to present to sales. And sales is waiting and they look like this. Are we gonna have a big surprise? The sales guys will start falling asleep, going to the bathroom, checking their uh, iPhone before three, three. So you have to think about who am I presenting to? How do they think? How many people know Lean and Six Sigma? Wave your hand, do you know Lean and Six Sigma? That's, this is what Lean and Six Sigma is. They're focused on making small improvements to our current processes. And where they're very vulnerable is, what about innovating a brand new process to replace the one you had? And we see, we try to teach them this, that this is, there's two parts. You've got to do, be able to do both of them. Here's our team today. 
And there's poor old David way down in the uh, thing. Now, if all of you had done the profile, you'd be all over the scatter diagram and we'd see where you were. Okay, so thanks for doing that. And we always, whenever we do anything, we always do a scatter diagram of the team that we're working with. How about the world? This is the world, the global ecosystem. This is all over the world, including you and me. Any thoughts? Would this be a surprise? How many people would be surprised by this? How many people would not be surprised by this? Mostly implementers and optimizers. What do companies hire these days, especially lately? They're hiring people who get the job done and to analyze. Uh, when you went to school, in high school, what kind of exams did you write? True, false, multiple choice, get the right answer. If you wrote an IQ test, the computer gave you your answer that afternoon. All you were doing was trying to match your answers to the computer, already had the answers. So we're based in a one right answer kind of society. And so this is not, now where's the opportunity? The opportunity here is companies need generators and they need conceptualizers. Many of them don't know that. They don't know that, but that's, if you can add value, uh, you can add value over on that side. I hope everybody understands some of this, okay? Uh, now the process, the how. Um, very quick story about real life. How many of the people in the room have ever seen this product? I didn't think so. It's sold only in Canada, United States, and it was the most successful new product in the world when it came out, and unfortunately was not made by Procter & Gamble. This product was made by our competitor, Colgate, and immediately it was the biggest success in soap bar history. Now, can everybody see the green stripes? Do you see the green stripes up there? That was brand new. We had the first bar in history that had stripes. Oh-ho. So they showed you there were stripes. And they would show you a guy taking a, with a knife showing you the stripes. Very important to see those stripes. But now why? Well, they showed you a guy in the middle of the meadow in Ireland taking a shower with his bar, and he was feeling very refreshed. Everything was refreshing, the dew on the grass, the mountains up here, the blue sky. You could now, the story, you use this bar, you will feel more refreshed. And it takes off like a rocket. Boy, we need a team, p and We need a team. We need a team. They put a team together, fix this problem. Six months later, I get a phone call from the team. Could we try some of that creativity stuff that you do? We're, everybody wants to quit the team. We're failures. Uh, why? In our company said, you know, you can't be number two and say we're equal to Irish Spring. We have to be better. We have made six outstanding green stripe bars, and every time we go and run a blind test, we come out equal with Irish Spring. So we go back. We go. And we're getting tired of going back and forth and back, but we can't beat them. So we needed to try something. So does everybody see how might we? What that team has been working on for six months is, how might we make a better green stripe bar? We agree on that. Now my job is to say, why? Why might we want to make a better green stripe bar? And the team has to answer. And somebody said, we're trying to get our market share back. Now that led to, how might we regain market share? Okay, we all fit together, why? My job is to say, good, Let's try again and do another. Why else might we want to make a better green stripe bar? And I wait for the team to answer. The team had a lot of trouble answering. Any guesses from you guys, if you're the team? They had trouble, so I said, okay, okay. Let's pretend we're somebody else. Let's pretend we're a user of uh, soap bars. Why would you want to make a better green stripe bar from their side, point of view? Somebody said, they want to feel more refreshed. And that led to how might we make a more refreshing bar? Now, they made many more, but these are the three things you need to know. Do you ever heard of thinking outside the box? This is called thinking outside the box. The aha was enormous. They, they, they were so happy, they could not believe it. And when they picked of the three, they picked the middle one. What advantage does the middle one have over the bottom one? Does it have more options? Which one has the most options? 
The top one. Why not pick the top one? We're getting late. Yep. Too many options. So in the afternoon, we generated solutions to this. And the best two solutions were, when I, go, when I think of refreshment, I think of going to the beach, white sky, blue clouds, ocean blue. Somebody said, I think of going to the seacoast. And out came a new bar called Coast. That was a blue and white swirly bar. It beat Irish Spring in a blind test, and off they went. And that uh, bar was, uh, was invented in two hours. But what, to, uh, what took them six months was defining the problem. That's the bar. One month later, um, Lever Brothers came out with give you your choice, green or blue stripes, if you want. Uh, then um, Coast came out with Sunburst Coast. Uh, Zest dial and Walgreens, everybody, it's a billion dollar industry. That's easy. Now what's the, what's the learning? Don't jump one to eight. Almost everybody in the world jumps from one to eight. And the idea is go one through eight, don't jump from one to eight. That's a, that's a, a, a very important thing that most people think in solutions rather than, uh, than um, problem definition. And uh, the skills are the ability to diverge, the ability to converge and the ability to defer judgment. Defer judgment before you jump. Uh, killer phrases, ever heard there's killer phrases? A good idea, but what's happening here, people are mixing diverge and converge. We try to teach you don't do that. You separate the two. And um, last thing I was gonna do, do we have two minutes? Yep. Okay, I want everybody to write something down. Ready, I want you to get writing, to write down. I want you to answer this question. What's the most important thing I learned in the last half hour? I want you to write it down. One thing you learned in the last half hour that might be new to you. If you didn't learn anything, don't write anything down. But if you learned something, write it down. Write it down in Polish or English, doesn't matter. Or Yugoslavian, if you like that. And now I want you to share that. Oh. Uh, what's the, uh, well, tell you what, we'll stop there. I want you to share that with your partner. Just share with your partner what's the most important thing you learned in the last half hour. Okay, and um, final thought would be, um, is there one thing I could do uh, at work uh, to implement this learning? How could I implement it? Okay, and I'm going to stop at this point and uh, say uh, thank you very much and uh, being engaged as you are. Thank you. Thank you.